In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel injector on this Dodge Dakota. You will have eight of these, four on each side of the engine. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing I want to mention is it's a good idea to make sure that you're in an area that you can get underneath the vehicle because you will have to lower the fuel tank. Aside from that, you're going to make your way underneath the hood. Along the driver's side, you'll be able to find the fuse box. We'll lift up the cover and remove that. The next thing you want to do is look for the area where it says you have a fuel pump fuse. This tells you exactly where to locate it on the legend right here. It's fuse number 18, a 20 amp fuse. We'll find that in the fuse area right here. To easily find this, you're going to find the 20 amp fuse that's off centered here and then make your way down to the fourth fuse, this yellow 20 amp fuse right here. Remove that with some long nose pliers. Give that a quick inspection to make sure it is still reusable and set that aside for now. Let's make our way behind the fuel door here and remove the fuel cap. Now the next thing that we'll do is attempt to start the vehicle. Typically what you'll find is that it'll crank, crank, crank and not start. Otherwise it may actually start, but then die out. At this point, we've removed the pressure from inside the fuel system and we can continue. Now let's make our way over to where the air filter housing is. You'll find that you have three clips holding the top area down to the bottom. Once you have all of those released, grab onto the top of the clamshell here, give it a little tug to separate it. We'll continue on to this clamp right here. For this, you can either use a flathead screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket. Now, as we start pulling this off of here, you'll notice along the backside, there's a breather hose. Go ahead and pull that off of the clamshell. Give that hose a quick squeeze. Make sure it's soft and pliable and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Remove your air filter and give it a quick inspection. Set that aside. Remove your air temp sensor wiring. Squeeze in this little tab. Pull that off and give it a quick check for corrosion. Directly underneath your air temp sensor, you'll find that you have a 10 millimeter headed bolt. Remove that mounting bolt. Now we can make our way over to the driver's side front corner of this. You're going to want to lift this straight up. You'll notice that it pops free from its mounting point underneath. Once you have that separated, go ahead and grab onto this and pull it straight forward to remove it from the throttle body. Set that aside. Let's continue on along the side of the intake here. Squeeze the clamp, remove the hose from the intake. We'll use some pliers for this. A quick check. We'll remove it from this area. Let's move back up to this area on the intake. We'll give this other hose a quick little squeeze. Set that aside as well. Now let's remove the bolt that holds the bracket for the AC lines down to the intake. Use an eight millimeter for this. Now let's move along to removing the spark plug wire from each one of our ignition coils. Quick check for corrosion. Set that aside, make your way down the line. Move along to each one of your fuel injectors. For the fuel injector, it'll be easiest to remove the red locking tab using a pick. 
Once you have that pried away, continue on to grabbing onto this area where the red tab was and releasing it from the fuel injector. Let's use some compressed air along where the fuel injectors are. Continue on with a flathead screwdriver. You're going to find where the fuel line connects onto the fuel rail. We'll use this to get in between the locking clip and separate it. Give that locking clip a quick inspection and set it aside because you will be reusing it. Disconnect the PCV hose from the PCV valve. To do that, right along this backside, there's a small tab that I'm pulling on with my index finger. And now I can lift this up and off of here. I'll give this a twist so you can see what I'm talking about. Right there. Set that aside. Now we'll continue on with a 5 16 fuel line disconnection tool. For this, we're going to put it right around the steel area on the fuel rail and try to slide it up and into the fuel line. As we're pressing this up and in, we'll also be trying to pull the fuel line onto the tool. We'll give that a quick check for rust or rot. Assuming it looks good, set that aside. Now let's remove our 10 millimeter mounting bolts that hold the fuel rail down to the engine. Now that we have both of those out of there, let's continue on to lubricating each of the fuel injectors down where they connect onto the engine. For this, I'll just use a little bit of parts cleaner. Now I'll use a pry bar and gently start tugging up on this. We want to be extremely careful not to damage the valve cover while doing so. Now, once you have the fuel rail separated, we're going to continue on to holding up the fuel rail and removing the clamp from the fuel injector that you will be replacing. For this, I'll just use an angled pick, press on one of the ears, start sliding it off, and then remove the other side as well. This is what the clip looks like. We'll set that aside. Now we can gently pry the fuel injector out of the fuel rail, being extremely careful not to damage the fuel rail. You can use a pry bar or a trim tool, whatever works best for you. There it is, friends. Now we'll continue on to cleaning and inspecting each of the mounting holes for the fuel injectors. All right, friends, now it's time to install our brand new fuel injector. Carefully take this and put it in place.
I'll hold on to this and slide it right up into that fuel rail. Once you feel as though you have it up inside the fuel rail as far as possible, continue on with your metallic clip. When you put this in place, you want to come from the engine side, pulling it out towards the outside of the vehicle. And you also want to make sure that you have these tabs facing up. Double check to make sure it's completely seated and try to pull the fuel injector out of the fuel rail. Assuming that feels tight, do the exact same thing to each one of the fuel injectors you will be replacing. Now at this point, we can push this back down into the engine. Make sure all of your fuel injectors are aligned properly. Continue on with your two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts for each side of the engine fuel rail. Once you have both of them started in, snug them up. Once we have that bottomed out, we're just going to make sure it's nice and snug. Now it's time to reconnect our fuel line to the fuel rail. Press that into place, listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Reattach the wiring to each one of your fuel injectors. Once you have them pressed in and you hear a click, make sure you lock them down with the red locking tab. I got my little click. I'll give it a tug to make sure it's secured. Lock it in. Do the same down the line. Reattach your PCV hose. Let's reconnect the hoses to the intake. The forward one does have the clamp that you need to slide back into its original position. Secure this line into its mounting bracket. Continue on to your spark plug wires. Let's make sure we install these in the proper orientation. Secure it to the valve cover. There should be several grooves. Now we can make our way over here. We'll re-secure these lines. Let's get this back on here. We want to make sure that we slide this area directly over the throttle body. As we continue sliding that on, we're going to swing the front side down, aligning it with its two mounting points. Once you're sure it's aligned properly, continue on with your one 10 millimeter headed bolt.
Perfect. Install your air filter and your air filter housing. For the housing, you'll find that you have several tabs that make their way across the top area and several holes where each one of those tabs needs to line up with. We'll angle this in, slide it into place, bring it down so we can lock it in. Tighten your eight millimeter headed clamp. Connect your air temp sensor. Attach your breather hose. Make sure everything's completely secure so you don't have any dirty or unmetered air making its way into the engine. Reinstall your 20 amp fuse in the proper place. Put on your fuse box cover. Reinstall your fuel cap. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, hop in the passenger compartment and start the vehicle. You might notice it takes a couple extra cranks because it has to pump fuel all the way up to the engine. Once the vehicle is running, make sure you check for fuel leaks. Aside from that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.